Hall houses the largest collection of women's art in Europe, and in October it opened a special exhibition of Jamaican women's art to the British public for the first time. Over half the artworks in the exhibition are on loan from Art Jamaica, a private collection of Jamaican-born Teresa Roberts and husband Andrew, who specialise in collecting Jamaican artworks and are keen to promote Jamaican artists to a wider audience. The artwork on display spans work from five generations of Jamaican women, from the work of Edna Manley to recent graduation works from young women who attended the College of Art named after her. Kingston-born art critic and author Edward Lucy Smith thinks the exhibition has a unique value. It's extremely important because it's recognition. That is, women have been to some extent shut out. Here you have them being celebrated. And it gives a good idea of how various Jamaican art can be if it tries. And it also shows that Jamaican art is radicalizing itself in a way that it never did before. Jamaica, though people don't always admit it, is a matriarchal country. Uh, that is the first big sociological study of Jamaican society was called, the title is, My Mother Who Fathered Me. Um, and it is women who hold the family unit together. And that is why it's extremely appropriate that Edna Manley, represented here, the sculptor, and married to one of the creators of Jamaican independence, why she is the first fully recognized Jamaican artist. She made Jamaican artists know that it's okay to paint yourselves what we look like and also to sculpt. You know, there is such strength in who we are as a people and not be afraid paint black people as they are. Her work, if you notice, is very, very raw, very powerful. And I, she was quite a woman, quite a woman in her day. Laura is one of my favorites as well. I'm standing beside her sculpture piece. Quite controversial artist. I don't know if you heard about the public art, Emancipation Park, the major piece that caused the controversy, I mean, throughout Jamaica and the region. That's the artist, and look at that. Look at something so delicate and fine and beautiful, also coming from the strength of emancipation. So this is why we must give the artists a chance to just be who they are. Edna's tradition of somewhat political art continues uh, with a sculptor like Laura Facey. You know, that this is a, with the praying hands, is a direct descendant of that. And, and uh, Jamaica is an open, society for all for all its all, all its faults it's a, it's a society in which people demote, debate argue it's it's a society with very much a public face and not all of the artworks are made to be seen uh, simply in middle class houses so there is a public rhetorical element which is like latin american art <laughs> Along with these broader statements on the human condition, the exhibition also contains an ostensibly eclectic mix of abstracts and styles. But here too, Edward Lucy Smith finds the selection of women's art provides a unique perspective. What you see is images very often of femaleness, that is of female forms. Very often there are hidden sexual allusions. To the even if the picture seems abstract, to the female body. And I think that is extremely interesting. But it has a lot of bounce and vigor. And I think that bounce and vigor comes from contact with American feminist art. And secondly, it, the, that contact with female artists uh, has liberated a kind of female assertiveness, which is rather typical of the Jamaican character. I mean, say, strong women of what I remember from Jamaica. <laughs> Women have been forced to find their own way. And what you see in this exhibition um, is a much freer approach to the contemporary than you'll get amongst the Jamaican men.
based on the fact and the development of pop culture in Jamaica and how we see and represent ourselves as, as voluptuous women. And this is just a microscopic view of fat cells and my studies of fat cells uh, for my final year exhibition. Currently I'm focusing on fibrotic cells within the womb as an African woman, a woman of African descent. And so it's similar in, in the sense of shape, but the context is different. For many, this first step to getting Jamaican art appreciated around the world has opened up new possibilities. I feel it's really important because I realise that the women here tonight who are showing works, they span over probably, I think, four or five generations. So to be like in a show with artists who have inspired me or who have like, you know, motivated me to, in the first place, go to art school, it's, it's a big deal, it's a big deal. And to see that, you know, they're all Jamaican women, I feel proud. It's really something that I think is going to explode. I mean, the, the pieces that you're looking at in this exhibition absolutely hold their own within the rest of the Newport Art Collection as a whole. Um, and I think will work really well um, sort of throughout Britain. Um, it just needs to be picked up. So we're hoping that this is what will do it, kickstart it a bit. A lot of the pieces come from the final year show of, of the Edna Manley Art School and some of those artists are here tonight so, so that's great for the future of Jamaican art um, and as I say if people went there I think they'd be very surprised at structurally how strong the Jamaican art scene is. We will certainly want to um, open up the whole of Jamaican art and not just women's art and, and we've got some ideas at the moment in terms of where we might in central London be able to put a show on uh, for Jamaican artists in general um, and those would be you know, hopefully the shows would get sort of you know bigger and uh, and a wider audience would see um, you know, the variety of art that's in Jamaica at the moment which would be great. I just think it is a wonderful start coming starting with the Cambridge University and for us to go on the international scene, there is no stopping us. Just allow our artists to explode on the international arena.